This is John from Cultured Analysis, and this is our first installment, technical installment of Kombucha Cam Academy, where our goal is to demystify the science behind kombucha and kombucha brewing. The topic of today's video is going to be an introduction to the simple science behind the actual production of kombucha. So let's get started. All right, so let's begin by talking about what I think we all know. So what are the components of kombucha when we begin to brew it? All right, so what we know here is that if we want to make kombucha, we have to start out with two important ingredients. We have to start out first with sweet tea. Now, it turns out that the sugar in tea is the primary food that the um, microorganisms that uh, make the kombucha are going to consume. And that brings me to the second point. We need those microorganisms. Now, the microorganisms are contained in what we call the SCOBY. And the SCOBY is a symbiotic culture or combination of bacteria and yeast. So the microorganisms that are of importance to us are yeast and bacteria. So now what we want to do is talk about the various roles that those microorganisms play in the production of our kombucha. So let's start from the top of our diagram here. So as we know, we need to bring food in for the microorganisms. The food is going to be the sugar in the sweet tea. Now normally when we start with sweet tea, we would start with cane sugar or table sugar, which is otherwise known as sucrose. Now sucrose is what we call a disaccharide, which is a more complex sugar. Now the problem with sucrose is that the microorganisms themselves can't directly use it in the various metabolic pathways that they have to undergo to make our kombucha. So the first step that has to happen is that both the yeast and the bacteria, which I show here, need to actually cleave the sucrose into two simpler sugars, specifically glucose and fructose. So these are the so-called simple sugars. They're important to us because these are the sugars that can be directly utilized by the yeast and the bacteria to make the kombucha. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to actually break down the various processes or the pathways that the bacteria and the yeast undergo to make all of the various flavors that make kombucha what it is. Now it's important to recognize that these various pathways that we're going to show you here are very complex. And generally speaking, these pathways are going to be um, utilizing enzymes. Enzymes, of course, are found in the cells because that's where all the reactions are going to be occurring. And enzymes are essentially nature's catalysts. Enzymes have two real functions in the processes that we're going to be talking about. First, they keep the um, reaction moving along at a good pace. And the second thing that the enzymes do is that they actually define a certain degree of specificity for a given reactant or substrate. So that could be something like glucose or fructose, or later on we'll talk about ethanol. So these are all things that are utilized by the yeast and the bacteria to make the products that we want. Now, let's talk first about the actual yeast. Now the yeast are in here, and specifically the yeast that we're talking about found in the SCOBY is gonna be a type called Britannomyces. Now, other types of yeast can be found in scobies as well, but this is going to be the predominant one in most scobies that we would encounter. Now, the idea here is that the yeast is going to allow for a fermentation reaction to occur. Pretty much the same fermentation reaction that we would get in the production of something like beer or wine or hard cider. Now, the idea here is that the yeast will ferment um, the glucose and the fructose in order to generate these products that I show you here. So in the case of the Britannomyces, we're gonna make carbon dioxide gas, we're gonna make ethyl alcohol or ethanol, and that's the type of alcohol that we consume in alcoholic beverages, and finally acetic acid. Now, that's what the yeast is doing. And this is where the symbiosis comes into play. Because when we talk about the symbiotic combination of yeast and bacteria, what that really means is that the two um, types of microorganisms are working together. So what's really happening here is that the yeast through fermentation is providing, by way of ethanol, food for the bacteria. So they can then produce the products that they need to produce. Now, let's talk about the um, role of the bacteria. 
Now in the SCOBY, we typically have two or more types of bacteria. The primary types of bacteria we would expect to find, which both fall under the acetobacter or acetic acid bacteria family, are gluconobacter, which handles the um, reaction of glucose. And we also see that we have acetobacter, which handles the um, production of acetic acid by um, utilization of fructose. Now let's move over to the left-hand side of the bird board first to focus on um, what the um, gluconobacter are doing here. All right. So first of all, we're going to take the glucose, and we have two separate pathways here. So let's focus on the leftmost pathway first. Now, when you brew kombucha, you notice normally after a few days that you start to see a biofilm forming on top of the kombucha. Now, this might be called the pellicle, some of you may refer to it as the mother, but it's sort of the whitish mushroom cap looking material that forms on top of the mixture um, as a result of the fermentation process. Now, the way that's made is that through this pathway right here, Gluconobacter is converting glucose to a polymer called cellulose. Cellulose, as it turns out, is the um, primary component of things like wood and paper that we're familiar with. Now, we refer to this as the pellicle or sometimes the biofilm. And it has various um, important um, aspects in terms of the um, formation of the kombucha, some of which are still being carefully explored. We also know that it is a place where um, the SCOBY can be housed. It's not the only place in kombucha where we find SCOBY, but it is a place in the kombucha mixture where SCOBY can reside. So that's often what we think of as it when we think of it as, say, the mother. Now, that's one thing that's happening. Now, keeping with the gluconobacter, we have another pathway here that can occur. Glucose can also go through a separate pathway to form gluconic acid. And this is one of the important acids that contributes to the sour taste of the kombucha. So if we think about our kombucha, it's a very nice combination of sweet and sour. So the sweetness, of course, comes from residual sucrose that isn't used, plus any glucose and fructose that's left over. And then the sourness comes from the acids, one of which is the gluconic acid that we have here. Now, if we focus over on the other side of the board, we'll see the other um, bacterial pathway. This one is acetobacter, or caused by acetobacter, which is another kind of acetic acid bacteria. This one is responsible for converting fructose to acetic acid. Now, acetic acid contributes more of the vinegary type taste that we sometimes encounter in kombucha. And then, over time, acetic acid can be further hydrolyzed into water and carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so taken together, all of these processes are going to contribute to the ultimate flavor profile or characteristics of your kombucha prior to any flavoring or secondary fermentation that you do. Okay, so again, the sweetness comes from the sucrose, glucose, and fructose that we find in the kombucha at the end of the fermentation, and the sourness comes from the combination of the gluconic acid and the acetic acid, which we find in the ultimate brew. Why is this important to us? Well, all of this is important to us from an analysis point of view and also from a brewing point of view because when we think about it, the yeast and the bacteria are really little chemical factories generating all of these things that we see here. And when they do so, it's the final combination of these products that's going to define the nature of our kombucha the acidity of our kombucha, the flavor of our kombucha, and even the amount of ethanol that resides in our kombucha. And all of these things are ultimately important to us in terms of the final profile of our product. We hope you've enjoyed this video. We're planning on coming out with plenty more. If you like what you see here, make sure you hit the like button and make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time.